today we're gonna do something that you guys have never seen us do before, and that is machine Nitronic 60. Now, Nitronic 60 has become pretty popular in the aerospace and automotive and other industries today, but it wasn't always so. It's grown in popularity. But before it grew in popularity, we were cutting it in our very own shop. And we went through a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations. There were things we learned along the way. And today, we wanna share those things with you. Now, you may be asking, what is Nitronic 60? Well, Nitronic 60 is an austenitic stainless steel that is one of five different types of stainless steel. Now, the austenitic series is probably the most popular series. You know it as 303s, 304s, and 316s. Now, Nitronic 60 is similar in composition to these stainless steels in that there's present nickel, chromium, manganese, silicone, but there's also the addition of nitrogen and carbon, which give it some of its unique properties. Also, the amount of manganese and silicone that you see are at much higher levels than in these other stainless steels. Now, it's this specific composition that gives Nitronic 60 its unique characteristics. It has high strength, especially under high temperatures. It has strong corrosion resistance, and one of its most sought after attributes is its resistance to galling, which galling is a tendency of stainless steels in particular to really wear down, especially in fastening applications, and get stuck to one another. And so those are just a handful of the reasons in which Nitronic 60 is an excellent choice for your stainless steel needs, and we're gonna show you how to machine it. All right, so we got our bar in the machine, but we need to set where we want the bar to be when we machine the part. That is, we want enough material hanging out that when we turn everything back, we're not gonna smack into our jaws. Now, the length of our part is 2.356. Now, I usually like to add about four to 500 thou to give us that length. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out to 2.750, and that should be good and safe. All right, about 2.758, that'll be good. All right, so we have our material sticking out. We got both our work offsets set for both turrets. Now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna run some Nitronic 60. Now, when we were first running Nitronic 60 a while ago, we were running it much slower than we are today. I was running about 175, 200 SFM. Well, today we're gonna to be pushing these inserts a little bit harder. We're running in the 400 to 500 SFM range, so we'll see how everything holds up. All right, so we completed our roughing operation. She ran pretty good. Again, she sounded pretty good. She looked pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a hole in her now. Let's get it done. All right, so we drilled the part and we now have a 7 8 hole inside of her. I did lower the SFM for these inserts down to 350. So up next, we're gonna go ahead and finish the OD. All right, so we now have an OD that is dialed in, but those are the keywords dialed in, right? This is a new part, we hadn't ran it before, and so I'm taking a 15 thou cut for my finish pass, and so I went ahead and roughed it so I could take two of those same exact cuts, so I have same equal tool pressure and whatnot, and I'm really impressed with the results. All right, next up, OD threads.
So our thread has been machined and as you saw with our thread gauge here, we are good to go. Now we did the thread kind of like we did the OD, right? We backed it off, we checked it with the pitch mic, saw how far we needed to go in, then ran it one more time and voila, we got a good thread. Now just a little tip when you're using your ring gauge, make sure you go all the way back to that shoulder. If you haven't, you probably need to either move your program in or bump your tool in a little bit in Z. Now we're almost done with op one. We have to put a small hole right here in this thread relief and then finish the ID. So we're nearing the end of op one here. We went ahead and we put our 60 thou hole right in our thread relief and then we went ahead and bored the part out. You could probably do that in the reverse order if you like, but for me, I wanted to go ahead and drill, bore it out, and then come through with that drill one more time just to kind of hopefully knock that burr out because that burr on the ID right there can kind of be a pain sometimes. So that was my reasoning behind that. Now with that, let's go ahead and part this off and we'll get to op number two. Okay, so as you can see, this part came out pretty well. Now, some of you might be wondering why we're not doing a chuck transfer, because the TT2100, it's very capable of doing that. But because I have some tight GD&T on this part, in fact, I have a datum right here on this face and a datum right here on the OD. And my jaws in there, they have a hole that is just about a little bit wider than the front of this part when it comes in and grabs. So I'm a little concerned with this caulking because of the tight GD and T tolerances with the features that I have to machine on this side. That being said, again, I'm really happy with where we're at op one. Let's go finish it off with op two. So our part is in our second spindle now. And again, we talked about that we have some tight tolerances from the features that are machined on op one to the features that are machined on op two. So we wanna make sure that we put an indicator on it and make sure that our run out is good. And here I'm seeing about two tenths, just over maybe, which is gonna be good for me. I think we're good to go and ready to machine. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do on our OP2 is we're gonna rough out our ID. Now, I went with a little bit smaller nose radius than you might do on a roughing operation. I went with a 15.6 nose radius. I did that because I really want these tools to stay sharp, and the sharper they are, the less pressure they're gonna put on that part, and it's gonna be less likely to move that part around. If you remember, we had that really tight tolerance, so I really want that part to stay secure in those jaws, hence, sharp tools. went ahead and faced the part on op two and we are to size. I went ahead and only did one finish pass here because I only had 20 thou of material to take off. Now what you didn't see is I did take a little bit of a skim cut first, take this out, measure it so I could make sure I set the right amount of material to take off because my tolerance for here is only plus or minus a thou and I really wanted to make sure I hit that length. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and finish the ID.
Okay, so we finished up our ID on OP2. Now, this feature is only about 50 thou deep, so it's a little tricky to measure. To be honest with you, it says it's perfect here on my inside micrometer, but we're gonna wait to run it on the CMM and make sure that my touch right here matches my results over there. And with that, we have one more feature to machine, and that's gonna be our holes right here on the front, and after that, we'll be Nitronic 60 machined to complete. And that is how you machine Nitronic 60. Now we've checked all the features we can in the machine, but we are gonna go and we're gonna use the CMM, check what we can't check, maybe look at some things that we're uncertain about, and we'll let you know how she comes out. Right, so there she is. Now Nitronic 60 can be a difficult material to machine, but if you have the right process and you use the right tooling, you too can machine this material.